Now, it may be hell on earth for a person to marry the wrong partner. It is not vital at all. The next thing I would like to say is that everybody must understand their mission and vision here on earth. You must have a purpose. What is your purpose? Especially before you go into a marriage. What purpose do you have? What are the things that you want to become? For example, a man says, ah, <clears throat> I'm going to be a pastor. I've been called to be a pastor. I want to do the work of God. And he knows. Are you getting me? Definitely, by the time a woman or a sister begins to come around, of course, the person will be seeing the purpose. Say, I know this man. He wants to be a pastor. He wants to be an evangelist. He wants to be a prophet. The woman will begin to see it in him. Praise the name of the Lord. But if you don't have a purpose, you don't have anything at all, and you have jumped to the marriage, either as a man or a woman, what may happen is that hey, the woman will say, hey, pastor, I didn't know that I married I married an evangelist. So it was not an evangelist. I, I didn't succumb for an evangelist at the beginning. I thought I just married my husband. And now he's an evangelist. He's moving from one town to the other, preaching the word of God. He's moving from one town to the other. A lot of people are around him. He's moving from one town to the other. He's not, he's not even with his uh, family. And the woman begins to get frustrated. So everybody must have a purpose. And the same thing goes with the woman. The woman must also have a purpose. The woman must have what, what a purpose. For example, assuming the lady is a very good gospel singer and she wants to be singing around, singing. If the husband to be does not know that purpose, then you just end up saying, oh my God, I married this woman, she's, today she's in this place, tomorrow she's here, next tomorrow she's here, jumping about from one place to the other, saying I'm singing gospel, I'm singing, beloved, it is something that we have heard about and we need to very, be very, very careful about it. And I pray that as the Lord has given us this grace to talk to ourselves, the hand of God will touch every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, beloved, I don't want to go too far, but one question I want us to understand today in this singles prayer program is that there are so many things that is hindering our singles from getting married. So many things. And I just cannot cover everything all. I can't, I can't put everything together. But what I'm going to say in a very brief uh, manner to uh, those of us that are here today is simply, and this is to the ladies, this is to the ladies. This is to the ladies. Ladies, hear me and hear me very well. Men attend to women for two reasons. Men attend to women for two reasons. Sex and love. <laughs> but in most cases, <laughs> men do not marry for sex or love. So all the women that are listening to me, hear me and hear me well. They don't marry for sex or love. They marry for stability. So women, ladies, take notes. And let me explain what I mean by stability. A man can love you and still not marry you. You can be beautiful, you can have everything and still not marry you. These are things that we need to talk to ourselves. A man can have sex for years without marrying you. He can be having sex with a woman every day, every time, and he doesn't marry the woman. But immediately that man finds the person that brings stability into his life. He marries. Say, hey, pastor, I've been with this man, oh, for I've been with him. We dated, we were cutting for several years. He didn't marry me. Then he met somebody in three months. He just married the person. I know many of you have heard that before. What I mean by stability is peace of mind. Peace of mind. A man can have sex with you for several years without marrying you, but immediately he finds someone who is bringing stability into his life. He marries the person. What I mean is he brings, he sees someone that is bringing peace of mind. <laughs> Many people have made the statement. I love this lady. A lot of men have said, I love this lady, but I don't think I can spend the rest of my life with her. Men are visionary. When they think about marriage, they do not just think about wedding dress, bridesmaid, uh, groomsmen, the suit, the way it's going to be on that day. Are you getting me? They don't just think about that or anything. Most of the things that this, most of the ladies think. And all of you, all the ladies start beginning to uh, uh, fancy. All those fanciful things that ladies think, you know, ladies think in detail. Men don't think like that. They think whether this woman can build me a home. Can she take care of my kids? And can she take care of me? Can she give me peace of mind? 
Men don't like ladies who give them discomfort. Once you begin to give a woman, a man discomfort, forget it. There's nothing like marriage there. You can be beautiful, you can have everything, you can have big chest, a big bum bum, forget it, it's not going to work. This is why men can stay with a woman for years and meet another one in a month, then they get married to her. It is the comfort of having what I call what? Peace. Peace of mind. Peace of mind. They want peace of mind. So, sex is just for pleasure. Love is what I call a, is an affection. So, everybody must understand that stability is very, very important. Peace of mind is very important. If you understand what I'm saying here, let me see you say, yes, I understand you, Pastor. 